It's now time to put all you have learnt to good use and get onto the water for your first attempt at kite surfing. The first step is to learn the water start. You can practice the basics of this on dry land before you get onto the water. Once again, choose the right location. Large shore breaking waves in a crowded spot will make your first attempt at a water start very difficult, if not impossible. So find a quiet spot with flat water if you can and lots of space downwind. Let's break down the components of the water start. With your board on your feet, sit in the water with the kite at 12 o'clock, directly over your head, and be facing your body directly downwind. Both legs should be bent at the knees and extended the same amount. If you find yourself twisting in one direction, use the kite to steer in the opposite direction to bring you back into this position. When putting your board on your feet, good one-handed kite control is required, so practice this. Lay back gently in the water and make small adjustments to the kite to keep it directly above you. When ready, bring the board downwind of you and hold it in position whilst you put your feet in the straps. Keep your eyes on the kite if you need to, to help to maintain position. The water start consists of performing several things at the same time. The first part of the water start is the power stroke or power dive. And often during a water start, we will bring the kite across to the other side of the wind window so we can access more of the wind window's power zone as a large amount of consistent power is required to pull you up out of the water. In this clip, we want to go to the right side. So we move the kite across to 11 o'clock on the left side before steering the kite down with your right hand deep into the wind window's power zone. The pull from the kite will be instantaneous, so be prepared. Allow it to pull you up onto the board and as you are leaving your sitting position, you need to straighten your front leg. Lean back into the harness against the pull of the kite. Once you are moving across the water, look to your kite and steer it back up out of its dive if you need to, to prevent it hitting the water. It will provide power on the upstroke as well, so be prepared. Remember to pull the bar in on the downstroke and out on the upstroke to allow the kite to fly efficiently through the wind window. When water starting, you want to steer the board downwind to make the resistance against the kite as low as possible. However, once up on the board, lean back and push with the heel of your back foot to carve the board so you're heading across the wind. Naturally, a lot can go wrong here. If you don't lean back enough against the power of the kite, you'll be pulled forward and over the other side of your board. If you don't straighten your front leg, you may slide or skip downwind, losing all of your power. Or if your power dive is too small or too far to the front of the wind window, you won't generate enough power to pull you onto the board. A good way to get the hang of the water start is to sit on the beach and perform small power strokes, getting larger each time until the power pulls you from sitting to standing. For a water start, getting the balance right between the size of the power dive and the right amount to lean back against the power of the kite requires practice and a lot of time on the water. So remember the steps. The first step, a good power dive deep into the wind window. Second, allow the kite to pull you onto the board. Straighten your front leg to steer the board downwind. And third, steer the kite back up out of the dive and push on your back heel to steer the board across the wind. In breaking down the water start, and to summarise, these still images may help. In these clips you can clearly see the bar steering required to steer your kite deep into the wind window. 
creating the power needed to pull you up onto the board. In preparing, sit with your knees bent in the water and your kite directly above you. Look around you to ensure another kiter is not in your path and you have enough space to perform your water start. When the kite is sent deep into the power zone and you feel the pull from the kite, straighten your front leg and extend your back leg, allowing the pull from the kite to pull you up onto your board. And leaning back into the harness to absorb the kite's power. Heading downwind after a water start for too long will cause a lack of tension in the lines. So heel steering and edging the board as soon as you can is required to maintain the power and pull from the kite. Water starts may seem impossible when you're learning, but persevere and practice. Good kite control is a key factor. So before trying to water start at a new location, perform a few downwind body drags and power strokes so you're more aware of the wind strength for that day and only get your board onto your feet when you're confident. When you perform your first successful water start and race across the water for the first time, the excitement is worth the effort. Once up and planing, your body position is very important. Keep both legs slightly bent at the knees to absorb bumps. However, the front leg needs to be extended more than the back to maintain the correct stance. Never lock your knees. The power of the kite should be absorbed by your body weight leaning against the harness and transferring this power through your legs onto the board. So lean out against the power of the kite and allow your arms, back and legs to simply make minor alterations to keep your board and kite in position. With your hands, you don't need to squeeze the bar tightly to hold on, just a gentle grip so you can make slight adjustments to the kite. If the wind is gusty, you may need to perform some power dives whilst kiting to keep the board planing. If you require only a small amount of power, you can make these small S-like movements by bar steering with the kite. Or, if a large amount of power is required, full power strokes can be performed back onto the other side of the wind window, known as figure eights. Whilst creating a large amount of power, they will help to keep you planing, often required in patchy, very inconsistent light winds. The kite will hold its position in the sky by the resistance you provide it when moving across the water. Pushing on your heels is required to edge the board when planing to create this resistance. So after your water start and during all planing, you need to push down with your back heel to edge the board. If you push too hard with your back foot, the board will stall and not perform very well. So keep your front leg straight with slight pressure on the front heel, whilst with the back leg try to find the right amount of heel pressure required to keep you planning comfortably across the water. Kite surfing with your board on the water takes lots of practice and be aware that different conditions require you to alter your technique to suit those conditions and watch other more experienced kiters to help you learn techniques to suit the winds and water in your local area. Persist as the efforts will pay off.